one thing that's really important to know is what calcium does. Okay. Do you remember him talking about what calcium does? Calcium binds to the outside of sodium channels, okay. and it's what holds them shut. Okay. That's what they use in the acid. Or that's something else. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I do know that calcium, it binds to the outside of the sodium activation channel and it's what keeps it shut. So for example, if you don't have calcium at all, that guy won't shut. So you have an action potential and they don't shut. So the calcium tries to bring it down, but it doesn't do too good of a job. Okay. So that's really important to know. The other important thing is so with... To a channel or it binds to the outside of the voltage sodium-gated channels. So more, yeah, so the voltage-gated sodium channels. Okay. The other important thing is with all those hyper and hypoemias, because that's saying high or low concentration of something in the blood. And all those things you're going to be putting in, like, you'll never find, like, Na plus to put in someone. It always comes as, like, NaCl, table salt. So, a positive and a negative. So, you're going to be inputting neutral charges in people. Okay. okay. So, the neutral charge is really important because it helps you understand why things change or don't change. So, Hypo and hypernatremia. So what does that mean? High concentration? Incre yeah, increase concentration. where? In the, in the in, blood. In the blood. So outside the cells. Okay. So we have a ton of sodium out here. But we also put in negative ions, right? So we put a ton of neutral charge out here. How is that going to affect RMP? It's going to make it go down. Why? Because it, normally it's positive on the outside. So normally it is, so yeah, it's positive on the outside, right? Mm -hmm. But we added a, a negative. We added a bunch of positives and negatives. So those cancel out. So it stays the same it's positive. The same. Okay. So RMP for hypernatremia or hyponatremia for that matter is the exact same. It doesn't change it. So when there's an increase in sodium or um, calcium or anything like that, there's in some there, there, are there, are there are differences. There are differences. This is with natremia. Okay. Let's talk about um, let's talk about potassium and then um, calcium. Okay. So, natremia, Na, tremia, that's why it's the sodium. So, calcemia, okay, for potassium, okay. So, high concentration of potassium where? In the blood. So, without me saying anything, do you have any idea how it might affect it? It'll want to go um, inside the cell? So it wants to go inside the cell, but we already have a really high concentration inside the cell. Like, to give a relative, it's probably still like this. So this guy is still bigger than this guy. Okay. Okay. So how does that affect our electrochemical gradient? Gonna be, it's going to change on the inside. So it's going to change. Okay. How, how bad does it want to go out now? Not as much. Not as much. So are we going to keep or lose potassium inside the cell? It's going to 
gonna go up very slowly. So it'll go up. It'll, yeah, it'll probably be slowly. So we're keeping more positive in the cell. Does that depolarize or hyperpolarize the cell? More what charge? More positive inside the cell. So is that gonna be more or less negative? Okay, so which direction? Up. So it depolarizes it. Okay, so it can either have it at just a higher resting membrane potential, and so that would be very, you'd be easily excitable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the action potentials are sending signals. Um, I get action potentials going down my arm, flexes my muscle. That's how I send the signal. Mm -hmm. So if I'm so all of a sudden anything can make it go over very easily. So it would be twitchy and stuff like that. Or if there was enough, then it could cause a constant action potential or a tent. So, that so I, I have to so this up. measures what's inside or outside? This is the inside of the cell compared to the outside of the cell. Okay. Yeah, okay. So inside of the cell compared to, so the zero mark, the outside of the cell. Okay. What about hypocalcemia? That means there's less, less what? calcium. Calc, sorry. Oh. It's easier to do when you see the word. Because mm -hmm. this one's calcemia, yeah. calcemia. Okay. So that's um, less potassium. Less potassium where? Okay, so how does this affect it? So want to go out more or um, out less? More. More. It's less inside. So more or less positive inside the cell? Less positive. So what is the overall result? Um, it's going to go um, down. Down, hyperpolarize. Yeah, and that's what it does. Good job. Okay. Calcemia. This one is all about this. Because when we input it, so it would be like. <coughs> Excuse me. So two plus. And then because I have Cl2 minus, so it's 2 minus, because there's two of them. So, because I'm inputting a normal charge, so I'm going to say hypercalcemia. So I, so it's a neutral charge, right? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't affect it. So even at my resting RMP though, just so you know, there are some voltage gates that are always open, okay? Because their voltage for them to open is probably somewhere down here. So they're always open, okay? And it, they stay at negative 70. So there are a couple of them that are always open. So if we put in a lot more calcium, that's gonna make them close. Okay? Because it binds, right? Because mm -hmm. it binds to it and causes it to close. Okay, so on the flip side of it, if there's not enough calcium, what would happen? they would stay open or there wouldn't be enough calcium to cause them to be closed. Mm -hmm. So in hypercalcemia, so we have a high or low amount? High. high amount, what's gonna happen? It's gonna close. So it'll close even the few that are open. So is that gonna be depolarization or hyperpolarization? Yeah. Or remain the same? It actually hyperpolarizes goes down. just a little bit. Because, well, Beca it, does it close the pump? Because it, um, it doesn't close the pump, but so at rest, we usually pretend like they're all closed at rest, but at rest, there are some sodium channels that are open. So a little bit, because one, one channel being open doesn't make that big of a difference. So all of a sudden, 
we get a little less of the positive going inside the cell. Less positive inside the cell means more negative. So it hyperpolarizes a little bit. Would it be because um, so it's closing all of them? And so there's yeah. not more coming in? It's just yeah. Cause because usually we pretend like all the sodiums are closed at this point, but there are a couple that are, they always, are almost always open. So if we have a ton of calcium, it's going to even bind to those guys that usually stay open and close them too. Okay, so this is the one that you have to kind of know what's going on, the calcium one. Okay, so, but if we didn't have enough calcium out in the blood, what would happen? To the channel, to the gates. They would stay open. Would, some of them? Yeah, they would stay open, or some of them never close. So, what would happen to the RMP? Would it be the same now? Like, it would stay the same? No. So, the sodium gates that we usually have closed are going to pop open. No cows. No calcium or little calcium. Because we normally need some calcium to have some close. Yeah. So if we have too much calcium, it's going to close. Think of it like closing all of the sodium gates, even the very few that were open. So no positive can flow into the cell, and the very little that was flowing into the cell can't anymore, so it goes down. When there is too little calcium, all the ones that should be closed are wide open. So sodium is free flowing into the cell. So that's gonna go up. So it's gonna go up. And so calcium will try to balance it out, but it'll stay up here because the sodium is always coming into the cell.